For this crochet project, you're going to need your Tunisian crochet hook. I'm using a 5.75 millimeter crochet hook. I had to put a little um, label on here because mine is rubbed off, so one of these days I'll get a new one. But I actually like this size, so around this size of a crochet hook for my Tunisian crochet afghans. And you can see how I put a little pencil grip on here. So I also recommend that you get a pencil grip, and I still have these. I just bought a case of 16 of them. They're real inexpensive, and they last a long time. So for one afghan, I will tear this up, but it usually lasts through one afghan with these. So the reason why I like these is because you're constantly putting pressure with your thumb and twisting and turning, and so this little soft cushion helps protect your thumb and your hand as you turn the Tunisian crochet hook. You can see how it just moves freely on here and it doesn't get in the way when I put it on here. So You'll also need a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. Now in one of the Facebook crochet groups a lady had shared that she used these clothespins these are large jumbo clothespins, and I can't remember where I got these. I think I got these at Dollar Tree, but they're real inexpensive. And the reason why I'm going to use these is because when you're using Tunisian crochet, you have a lot of color changes, so you're going to have a lot of loose yarn ends on the back. And sometimes I'll tie knots. And for mine, when I tie knots, I never see the knots on the right side of the afghan. But if I can get away with less knots, I would like that. So using this method where I wrap the yarn, the excess yarn around this clothespin should limit the number of knots that I have to try. So this is the first time I'm actually trying it with this technique. Usually I'll just keep the yarn end, either cut it or keep it attached to the skein of yarn. So we'll see if I can make my lengths of yarn a little bit longer resulting in less knots. So the first thing that I do with my afghans is I kind of get an image in my mind of how I want the afghan, the finished afghan, to look. So this is one of the bottom blocks and for one of the bottom blocks I usually will put four blocks together. So these are actually four graphs that I taped together and for mine, I've found that after I've done several Tunisian crochet afghans, I prefer to work in 40 by 40 blocks, graph blocks. And to me, that seems to fit easier, and they're easier to work with. But you can change your graph sizes, and you can make your graphs, you know, your Tunisian blocks as long as you want. And there's even a Facebook group that's dedicated to Tunisian crochet and I would re highly recommend joining that group to see other techniques. This is just the way that I like to use Tunisian crochet and I find that this I prefer other crochet hooks for other crochet projects and the only time I use my Tunisian crochet is for these afghans because I just have so much fun with it. So I'm going to be showing you how I create my Tunisian crochet afghans. So this is going to be a mystery. Even I don't even know what the full finished under the sea afghan is going to look like. If you want to follow along, you can also go to my blog, www.helenmaycrochet.com, and at the bottom of my blog's page, you'll see a search button. If you want to, if you can't find this blog, you can search for it. And this is my under the sea cal for the year 2020. So if you want to follow along you can do that and I'll have these graphs on there for free download so if you like some of my graphs or you want to make your own graphs whatever you want to do to make your own unique under the sea blanket if you want to make it just like mine you can just follow along I plan on making a YouTube video for each of the blocks so the first the first thing I'm going to do is just tell you how I made this so what I did at the top of my home page you'll see a link for graphs. And when you go to that link you, link, you can find my free blank 40 by 40 graph if you want to draw your own too. 
So if you want to make your own under the sea graph, you can do that as well. Online, you can find all kinds of fun graph ideas or inspiration. Um, just Google under the sea images or cartoon images and you can find different images. You may even find ones that are already graphed. Now the problem is you'll need a graph that has the the boxes similar to mine which is the 40 by 40 or you can take the image and redraw it however you want to do it. So I always look online for inspiration and I kind of piece together what I want so what I'm going to do for the bottom of the blanket is I'm going to be creating sand and sea life like the seaweed and the corals. So here, this is my rough graph, but I redid it on Stitch Fiddle. So you can go on Stitch Fiddle after you're finished drawing and then you can just put all of the colors in how you want. So you can see how I changed this coral to a purple color and on here you can't really tell that I changed it to a purple color so this is just a very rough draft and for my cowl my crochet along I'm going to create stitch fiddle graphs for you to download for free if you like the graphs that I drew so they will be the finished uh, graphs that you'll be using so and I'll show you how I use these graphs as well so basically what I do is I get an image of how I want to complete the bottom of the blanket. And so I'm going to have three, four blocks at the bottom of the blanket. So in the bottom I'm going to have a bunch of corals and, and in the middle I'll probably have some other surprises. So when I get to that point I'll reveal what, I, what graphs that I have for that block. So for this four block we're starting with block one which is the crab. Block two will be the seahorse block three will be the clownfish and then block four will be the octopus and the other thing that I would recommend is all the white areas you can see how I changed it to blue so for the bottom of the blanket I'm I want to make sure that I use all the same blue color and I'll probably use all the same blue color for the middle too on my one of my Tunisian crochet afghans I tried experimenting with different blues and I didn't really like how it turned out so I'm going to keep the blue consistent. So keep in mind that you're going to need a large amount of blue for your ocean color. So I'll show you what ocean blue that I'm going to be using. And then I may use a variegated yarn for the very top of the blanket where the blue will fade out to the top of the ocean. So basically what I do is I tape my graphs together so I fold them. Once I print out four graphs I fold them to line them up and I found that when I'm drawing my graphs because I used to change the colors on the starting row and I found that you can do that but it's very difficult getting all the different color changes on that starting row so now what I do is oh, I actually put red here but I'll probably change that to brown when I finish the stitch fiddle graph because I like to keep one consistent row color it just makes it easier for the color changes so that's one thing that I've changed from my previous graphs the other thing that I like to do you can if you need a larger picture say you want to do a large octopus on the four graphs I've done stuff like that too and you can see that if you go to my Facebook group files from my previous Tunisian crochet afghans what they look like and it turns out really well so that's something you can do too and I may do that with subsequent gra graph blocks and then you would just what I do is when I'm finished I use Tunisian crochet to crochet these blocks together which makes it much faster than if you tried to sew these blocks together by hand so for this one I'm making it easier for the beginner because I'm keeping the color consistent so it'll be blue here and line up with the blue here so it'll make more sense once I start to show you how I create these blocks but you can see how I taped the blocks together 
and then I drew my images how I wanted them to look on my finished blocks. And for this one, I'm not going to use safety doll eyes. I'm going to actually use yarn for the eyes, but I had a lot of fun using safety doll eyes too. So that's an option you may want to consider. If you want to see what it looks like, you can go to my Wizard of Oz Tunisian Crochet Afghan photo album and you can find that in my Facebook group file photos. So this is the first block that we're going to create for the left bottom C floor four block. So this will be the block one crab and I'm going to show you how to Tunisian crochet this block. Before we get started I just wanted to tell you that I use a pencil to rough draft or draw the rough graph and then I like using the Sharpie Paper Mate but you could use color pencils too but I just prefer this because it shows up a lot darker with the colors. So now the first thing that you're going to do is just grab all of the colors that you need for this first graph. So for the brown color I'm using my Karen one pound and the color is brown. You don't have to get a huge skein like this one. If you have a different smaller brown colored yarn you can use that because I'm going to have a lot left over. This was just in my stash. Now if you're going to use a substitute I would recommend a medium four style of yarn. For the rocks I'm using Karen one pound and this is the medium gray mix and again you don't need to bit, get the huge skeins like I do because you're not going to use that much for the rocks but this is was in my stash so I'm using the medium gray mix and again it's a medium four style yarn. For some of the, uh, the, ground, the sea floor corals I'm using this purple so this is actually a deep purple colored yarn and it's also by Karen one pound and this one is a deep violet color. You'll also need a white colored medium for 100% acrylic yarn for the eyes. You'll also need a 100% acrylic medium four style black yarn. Now I have fun with the glitter yarns. I don't have it with me right now but if you had glitter medium four style yarn those are fun for the eyes. You will also need this for the crab's body, the outer outline of the body as well as the mouth. For the other coral colors I'm using my Bernat Baby Sport. This is actually a three, a light three style yarn but I'm just using it for my coral so it should be fine. I've done that before and this color, it's a really beautiful color probably won't need a lot of it for the corals that I'm going to be making. Let's see if I can find the color on this. Oh, it is a coral color too. So it's called coral. This is a beautiful green color by Karen One Pound. So I'm going to be using this for the seaweed. For my crab, I'm using Karen One Pound and I had this in my stash as well. So it's a beautiful raspberry wine color but whatever red color medium for 100% acrylic yarn will work for your crab. I just like the way this one looks. For the yellow in the crab's leg, I had this beautiful yellow in my stash, Crafter's Secret Big Idea. The color is yellow and this is a medium for 100% acrylic yarn. And I'll have plenty left over. So like I said, you don't need to use the huge skeins like I have. I just like to have it in my stash. Now for the ocean color, I decided on this beautiful turquoise medium four style yarn by Pound of Love, Lion Brand yarn. It's a really pretty turquoise color and there's a lot of it. So now after you know all of the colors that you're going to use for your block, we can get started. So you're going to get your brown colored yarn and you can see that the first row is all a brown color. And so the first row, we're going to be making a chain of 40. And the first chain will go from left to right for that first row only. So 
That will make more sense when you add colors on that first row. But for this one, it's easier because it's all one color. So this first row, each block will represent one chain. So we're going to start the first row with a chain of 40. So you're going to take your brown colored yarn and you're going to take and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the loop through the, the yarn through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Then you can start making your chain. I'm going to back up so you can kind of see how I hold the hook. So you can see how you can move your pencil grip also. And then you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through the loop for your first chain. And then you're just going to make a chain of 40. So there's the second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. So I'm just going to show you a couple more. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. So go ahead, finish a chain of 40, and then come back. So we just finished our starting chain, and our starting chain measures, mine measures approximately 13 inches. So each of these little blocks measures an inch on my board here. And so you can see that that first row, each chain corresponds with a block on the row. So now we finished our starting chain, and we didn't complete the first row yet. So we just completed the starting chain. And so our hook is right here on block one, one, first row, first chain. So that's where we are at this point on the graph. So you can see how I mean about the color changes. We started the chain from this side. So any color changes, if we made them, would be from left to right. So now we're going to make our first row. So the only thing we did was the starting chain. And now we're going to work the first row of the graph. So here, the number one, let me point at it. The number one, horizontally, we're going to work that first row. So now the first loop on your Tunisian crochet hook counts as the first block on the graph and you're going to take your crochet hook and go into the second chain from the hook. So you go right into that second chain from the hook and you bring up a loop. And now you have two loops on the hook. And so these loops represent one color on your graph. So here's one and two. And we're going to keep bringing loops up in the same color, the brown color, until we have a total of 40 loops on the hook. So, so far we only have two. Then you go into the next stitch, bring up a loop for three. So it's that easy. Bring up a loop in the next stitch. So now you have four. I'm just going to show you how I'm holding on to the hook. Next stitch for five. And you're just going to repeat this all the way across. And when you reach the end, you should have 40 loops on your hook. And for beginners, I recommend that you count your loops. Now, 
I always count my rows, but I don't count the loops. I count on the way back. I just find it easier and faster to double check and count on my way back. And I'll show you how I do that. So I'll show you both methods of counting for the beginners. So go ahead, finish getting one loop from each stitch until you've completed 40 loops on your hook and then come back. Now, this is the point where I have beginners count all of the loops. You should have, if you did it correctly up to this point, you should have 40 loops on your Tunisian crochet hook. So now you see why I like the 40 by 40 blocks because it fits nicely on my crochet hook and I still have room for my pencil grip. So once you know how to make the Tunisian stitches, then you can count going back like I'm about to do now. So, so far we've completed half of the first row. So we're still on the first row and we went all the way across here. So now we're going to complete the first row by going back to the one on the graph and then that will finish the first row. So, so far we've completed half of the first row and now we're going to go back. So, whenever you start going back, you always go through one loop to start. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through one loop only. So you bring it through one loop only. And you always start going back this same way. So that's one. That counts as one. Now you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops. So you go through two loops for two. So that's, that's how I count. The first one was one, this is two. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops for three. And that's how I count. And now you're going to yarn over and go through two loops all the way across. And you can see how you're creating vertical stitches. So that vertical stitch on the end is one, two, three. And now we're about to make four. So yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two for four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And this is how I'm holding my hands. Let me back up a little bit more. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. And you can see how I'm just putting gentle pressure on my pencil grip. You don't have to press real hard, just gentle. You don't want to hurt your thumb. Sixteen. Seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And I won't be doing this for every row. I'm just doing this for the first one, first couple. 24, 25, 26. I just want the beginners to see how it's done. 27, 28. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 
38, 39, and 40. So I, when I started making these Tunisian blocks, I didn't count sometimes when I was making my rows, I just went through. And I would recommend counting maybe not every row, but pretty close to every row. And the reason why is because I've made mistakes before and you don't want to have to frog and go back. So especially if you're making your blocks for the first few times, I would recommend counting. And to me, it's quick to count on the way back. So I prefer to count on the way back, but you know how you can count your loops on your hook or count on the way back. Either method would work just fine. So for this first row, I still have my yarn attached to the skein, the large skein. So I haven't used my little clothes pins yet. So I'll show you when I start to use these. So now we're going to start the second row. So we just finished the first row. And each of these vertical stitches that we created on that first row correspond with the first row on the graph. So you can see that each one is brown in color. And now we're going to be working on the second row. So on the second row you can see there's color changes. So you can see the color change here, here, back here, and then here, all across that second row. So I'm going to show you how to create the color changes. But first I want to show you the vertical stitches each vertical stitch corresponds with each of the brown blocks on your graph, one to one. So here, you can see a vertical stitch here, a vertical stitch here, and you can see there are 40 of these vertical stitches all the way across. And those are the stitches that we're going to be working into with our crochet hook. So now this loop that's on the crochet hook directly above the end loop from the previous row is the first loop or vertical stitch on the end. So we need to change colors now. So what you're going to do since the first block is blue for this row, we're going to change to the blue color. So you're going to bring up a loop with your blue colored yarn. Then you can just set your work down and then take and cinch the brown color down so you don't see it and then tie a knot. Then you can drop the brown colored yarn because we may need to come back to it. So we're just going to leave the brown colored yarn hanging. And now you're ready to start the second row with your blue colored yarn. And so you can see how that would correspond with the graph. And then you see how the next color is going to be gray. So you want to get your gray colored yarn. So now you're going to go into the next vertical stitch with your crochet hook. So you go into that vertical stitch only. So you can see how I'm grabbing only the loop of the vertical stitch. And then you're going to bring up a loop with the gray colored yarn. So you're going to grab the gray colored yarn and you're going to bring up a loop with the gray colored yarn. And then just set the work down. And then you want to tie a knot. So I'm going to tie a knot with the brown colored yarn that's right next to it. So now, and that's the nice thing about Tunisian crochet too, is each of the colors will line up with the vertical row 
vertical stitch from the previous row if you're doing it correctly. So you can see how my blue lines up over the brown from the previous row and now my gray lines up with the brown from the previous row. So now you're ready to, ready to bring up loops with your gray colored yarn. So you look at your graph again and so far I have my colors all attached to the skein still, the skein of yarn. So you can see that I have one blue vertical loop on my crochet hook and one gray. So for this rock I need a total of one, two, three, four, five loops of gray. So so far I have one loop of gray. So I'm going to go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, now I have two loops of gray. Go into the next vertical stitch from the previous row. Bring up a loop. Now I have three loops of gray. And see how they're just lining up? Just like the graph. Each of these loops corresponds with the graph block, one to one. Now you go into the next vertical group, vertical stitch from the previous row, bring up a loop for your fourth, go into the next one, for your fifth. Then you're going to look at your graph again. So, so far I have one and then one blue, and then one, two, three, four, five of the gray. And now I need one, two, three, four, five of the brown. So the brown color I can go ahead and cut from over here because we don't need the brown color over here. So we had already tied a knot with the brown color on this side, and I'm not going to need the brown color here. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that, leave a little bit for a loose yarn end with the brown at the beginning. Just leave that there. Then you still have the brown yarn attached to the skein of yarn, so you're going to bring that color over and you're going to go into the next vertical stitch drop the gray color and then you're going to bring up a loop with the brown color at this location. Then you want to take and tie a knot. So I'm going to tie a knot with the gray color right next to it. So now I have my brown. So you just drop the gray. We're going to come back to it when we need it. So just drop the gray color. Now I have the brown color on my crochet hook. So I'm going to look at the graph again. So here I finished the gray. Now I'm on the brown. I need one, two, three, four, five loops of the brown. So far I have one. So now I'm going to go into the next vertical stitch from the previous row, bring up a loop with the brown. So I have two. Three. Four. Five. So now we can see that we need the green color. So we need four loops of a green color. So now I'm going to go into the next vertical stitch from the previous row, drop my brown color, pick up my green color, and then bring up a loop with the green colored yarn. And then you're going to need to tie a knot. And then I usually just tie a knot with 
the brown color or whatever color is right next to it. And you don't have to tie real tight, a gentle knot. And then leave the loose yarn end there. Now I have my green color and I need four of the green color, so I have one. I'm just going to drop the brown color now and pick up the green. I have one. Two. Three. Four. So now I'm going to see what other color I need. Now I need the purple color, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in my purple colored yarn. I'm going to go into the next stitch, bring up a loop with the purple colored yarn. And then I'm going to tie a knot with the color that's next to it. And I need two of the purple colored loops. So I'm going to go into the next vertical stitch from the previous row and bring up another loop with the purple colored yarn. And again, each of the vertical stitches are lining up with the previous row's vertical stitches, just like the graph. My next color is blue. So if you remember, my blue is way over here. And I still need the blue on this side. So now, this is where my clothespin will come into play. So now, I'm going to grab one of my clothespins and I'm going to go back to my main color, blue, that I need from over here, which is still attached to my skein of yarn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a long length of the blue colored yarn to wrap around the clothespin. What's nice about these clothespins is a little hole there, so I just put the yarn right through the hole, and then I just wrapped the yarn around the clothespin. So now you see that I have a good amount of yarn on the clothespin. How I used to do it is I used to just cut the yarn and just leave a little bit of amount, but with that method sometimes you get all tangled. So you can see how you can get a tangled mess very quickly. So this keeps your yarn neat and organized and you can have a very long piece of yarn waiting for you on this end when you're ready to use the color at this end of the Tunisian crochet hook. So now my skein of yarn is free to get more blue colored yarn for this point. So now I can go into the next stitch over from the previous row drop my purple yarn and then bring up some more blue yarn at this point in my row. Then again you just tie a knot. So for this one I only need one loop of the blue at this point so I'm just going to leave it attached to my skein until I need to create a clothespin like I did uh, at the beginning. So right now I don't need to do that, so I'm just going to leave the blue attached to the skein of yarn. Then I'm going to look at my graph again, and it looks like I need more gray for the rocks. I need one, two, three, four, five, six loops of the gray. So if you remember, we left our gray yarn attached to the skein over here. So now I want to do the same thing with the gray yarn that I did with the blue yarn. I'm going to create a clothespin for the gray yarn here to free up my skein of gray yarn to bring over here. 
So I went ahead and put a lot of gray onto the clothespin. Now I may not need all of this gray at this point in my work, but I know I'll be needing gray for future blocks. So I went ahead and just put a bunch on there. And then you have your gray yarn freed up for your next rock. So now I'm going to go ahead and go into the next vertical stitch from the previous row and then bring up a loop with my freed up skein of gray yarn and then tie a knot So I need a total of six loops of the gray. So I'm just going to go into the vertical stitch, stitch from the previous row for my second gray. Third. Now I can look at the graph and I just finished this point. Now I'm back to brown. So I'm going to see where my brown color, it looks like my brown color is over here so I may need another clothes pin. I have to say that I really love this method with these particular clothes pins. Look how organized they keep my yarn they really will limit the number of knots that I have to create and I can keep longer yarn ends on those clothespins so I actually love that method a lot so now my brown is freed up so that I can bring the skein of brown over here where I need it so I'm going to go into the loop and then bring up a loop with my brown colored yarn and then I'm just going to tie a knot then I just need to find out how many loops I need with the brown colored yarn so I need one two three four five six loops with the brown colored yarn And now you're ready to see what the next color is. So now I only need four of the gray colored yarn before I switch back to brown. So now one of the things that you can do is if you know that you're close to the previous gray, you can stretch the gray behind. So if it's a short distance, you can stretch the gray. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So here, you can see that my gray is just right here. So I'm going to stretch it behind the loops. So I'm going to go into the next vertical stitch from the previous row. And then I'm going to take my gray colored yarn, stretch it across, and then just bring up a loop with the gray colored yarn. So as long as it's a short distance, you can do that. So that's another trick that you can use. So now I just need to see how many loops I need of the gray. So I need four loops of the gray before I finish the row with the brown. So that's two, three, Four. So now I need six of the brown. So I'm going to go into the next and then I'm going to stretch the brown across. 
because it's not that far. So I'm stretching the brown color, bringing up a loop. So that's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. And six. So now, this is how it looks right now, but you can kind of twist it. And you should have a total of 40 loops on your hook. So at any time, if you don't have the right color combination or right number of loops, because remember, each loop corresponds with one block on the graph. So you should have 40 loops on your hook at this time. So I've already showed you how I count on the way back. I'm not going to be counting on the way back because I'm going to be busy showing you how to color change on the way back. So I counted already and I have 40 loops on my hook. And remember, at this point, we've completed half of the horizontal row two. So we only completed half of it. So now we're going to complete row two when we go back across. And when you're going back across, you have to make your color changes. So I'm going to show you how to do that, and it's really easy. So remember, whenever you go back, you always go through one loop to start. So I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through one loop for my first. Then the rest you're going to be returning through two loops. And I'm going to show you how to make the color changes. So right now, I just went through one. Now I'm going to make my second loop. And you can see that the first two on my hook are brown in color. So I know that the return color is going to be brown. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through two loops with the brown color. Now two loops on the hook are brown so I know I'm going to return through two loops with the brown color. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through two loops of the brown color. Again two loops brown, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops with your brown color. Again two loops brown, Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops with the brown color. Still, two loops, brown. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops with your brown color. Now, you can see that you have brown, one brown loop, one gray loop. That means that you're going to go yarn over and go through with your gray color. So drop the brown colored yarn pick up the gray colored yarn, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops with the gray colored yarn. And then you can give a gentle tug with the brown colored yarn. Just a gentle, don't pull it too tight because you don't want to make your stitch stitches, vertical stitches, crooked. Then you can see that the two loops first two loops on the hook are gray, so you're going to yarn over with your gray color yarn. Go through two. First two loops gray, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two. Two loops gray, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two for the gray. Now you have a gray and a brown. So you're going to drop the gray and your brown color is over here. So you're going to stretch the brown color across. So drop the gray, pick up the brown color, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring it through two loops. Then you can see how you have a little bit of the gray right there that you can give a gentle, just a gentle tug, just a little bit, and then drop it. Then you can see that you have two loops brown, so you're going to yarn over with your brown, 
and go through two. First two loops brown, yarn over, go through two with the brown. Two loops brown. So you always look at those first two loops to determine when you're going to make your color change. So it's that easy. So now you can see the first two loops, one's brown, one's gray. So the next color change is going to be gray. So I drop the brown and then I look for the gray. So this is where I stretched the gray. So I'm going to stretch the gray across. So drop the brown, pick up the gray, give it a gentle tug, yarn over, and then bring the gray through two loops. And then you can take and just give a gentle tug to the brown, the previous colored brown. You can see it move right there. Drop the brown, pick up, resume with the gray because you have two loops starting with gray. So you're going to yarn over and go through two for the gray, 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 gray. So now you see that the first two loops you have one gray and one blue. So you drop the gray and you pick up your blue. So here you have your blue sitting right there ready to go. So if you don't like this method where you stretch the yarn across, you can always use the clothespin method, but sometimes I'll stretch it across if it's not that far, just easier for me. So now I'm going to pick up the blue and then go through two. So now you see that the first two colors you have one blue and one purple. So you drop the blue, you're going to pick up your purple. and then just yarn over and go through two. First two are purple, so you yarn over and go through two with purple. Now the first two is purple and green, so you drop the purple, pick up the green. Yarn over and go through two. You have two green, so you're going to yarn over and go through two with green. Green green. Now you have green and brown, so drop the green, pick up the brown, and I have my brown on the clothespin, which works nicely. Yarn over and go through two, and you can give a gentle tug on the previous color whenever you need to. You can see that area move when you give it just a little bit of a tug. And again, you don't want to pull it too hard because you're going to warp or mess up the stitches in the row. Then you just yarn over and go through the brown, 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 brown. Then I have the gray, so I can stop, drop the brown, pick up the gray. It's attached to my clothespin, works great, I love that. Yarn over and then go through two, still gray, 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 and then I have a gray and a blue, drop the gray, pick up the blue, attach to the clothespin, and then go through the last two. So this is what it looks like, and you can kind of give gentle tugs to the color changes if you need to. The stitches should be vertical directly above, so I have the blue above the brown, just like in the graph, all of your vertical stitches and all of the color changes. And don't worry about the curling at this point. You'll notice some curling. That's normal with Tunisian crochet. And that will be taken care of when we attach the backing, the fleece backing, and make a border. So it won't, that will hold it down once we do that. So there's no need to block or anything like that. So you can see all of the colors. Now here, 
You can see where the color changes. If you need to, you can kind of bring the stitches together gently. Same thing, see the blue? You can take and bring the stitches together gently. Each of the vertical stitches, again, will line up directly above the previous. And you can fix it too once you finish, start your third row, so don't worry about that. And this is how your work should look. And it'll get more beautiful as you complete more rows. So now you're ready for row three.